Stephanie is on the line starting off this hour in Minneapolis. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking our questions today. Sure. What's up? Um, so I have a question about um, how to navigate family relationships when you start making, like, good money. Um, so my husband and I's business went from zero to about gross 220 in about a year and a half. It's going really well. Uh, the trajectory is up, and it's awesome. But I've already started getting some weird comments from my family. So um, over that time when we um, – Started, when we started making some money, I was pregnant. We upgraded to a tuft and needle mattress and just like a little thing like that. Or we joined a nice gym in the area and we get these comments like, ooh, money bags over here. Must be making a lot of money. And I think when we joined the gym, it was, you must win the lottery to afford that kind of stuff. And so it's just been weird. And with the trajectory of our business going up and making more money, getting to live the life that we want to, vacations and, and things eventually, I just don't know how to navigate what we already have is a really good relationship with my family, but it's starting to get a little weird, mm -hmm. holidays and stuff, when we, when we tell them what's going on. So, yeah, yeah. just don't know how to do that. <laughs> well, um, it's a good relationship. Uh, n number one, if you have a good relationship and someone says something that um, is hurtful, you ought to be able to say that. Yeah. Say, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I know you probably didn't mean anything by that, but when you said that, it was like you were questioning whether we should be successful and kind of hurt my feelings. I just need to say that to you. Yeah. And so if you have a good relationship, you can do that. If they're just jerks, yeah. then you would just yeah. have to treat them like jerks. And th the thing is, what happens is this. Money... Uh, doesn't cause things money magnifies things that are already there good things yeah. good things and bad things the quality yeah. of your if you have a high high quality relationship highly functional it will become even more so with large sums of money around if you have weak and petty relationships that everyone acts like is okay but under the surface it's not then that will be magnified yeah. as you have wealth Okay. Yeah, if your if your daddy is proud of you, when you get wealth, he will be very very proud of you. Yeah. But if your daddy is yeah. a drunk and is dysfunctional and takes his uh, and has to be king of the hill or he can't be in a conversation because he's screwed in the head, and all of a sudden he can't be king of the hill because your net worth's eight times his, then your daddy is going to get worse. You know, yeah. you see what I'm saying? So yep. that's what you watch yeah. for. And I'd pick up uh, Henry Cloud's book, Boundaries, uh, because okay. that's what this is. Uh, it's a boundary issue. Mm -hmm. and, and read through it. You, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And it, it can be with functional things as simple as, you know, w one of the things we've been very, very careful to do with extended family is just not to we just don't talk about a lot of stuff that. Sharon and I will talk about it, and we'll say, well, I don't know if so-and-so can really emotionally grasp that, so we're just probably not even going to bring that up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um, and I, I know we've talked about that with extended family or friends or things like that. And obviously Yeah, friendships, friendships are, is the same way. I've got friends that yeah. can't emotionally grasp some of the things that we're able to do uh, for charity, for ministries. Um, yeah. you know, that, you know, I can remember the first time I gave a thousand dollars to something. And I can also remember the first time I gave a hundred thousand dollars to something, but you know, yeah. that I, I can, t you and I can talk about that now in front of everybody, but it's sometimes very yeah. awkward with an, a, a friend of 20 years ago, you know? And so yeah. I just have to be pretty calm and go, you know, that's, uh, uh, talk about them more and me less. And, uh, most yeah. people like that anyway, that's just good conversational manners. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in other words, I, I might not, if you went on a super, super nice cruise, you don't have to tell everybody you're not going for them. You're going for you. Yeah. And if you are going for them, you shouldn't be going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just, uh, and, yeah. and I quit buying cars for other people. I got really nice cars, but you know why? Cause I like driving them and I don't really care yeah. whether you like it or not. I like driving it. Yep. That's why I got it. I ain't anything to do with you. You know, and so, yeah. but, you know, occasionally you get a comment about a car and it's like, well, it must be nice. You know, hope mm -hmm. you can remember the little people. And I'm like, oh, jeez. 
you know, grow yeah. you a spine, <laughs> really. Is, I, man, I grew up little people. I've been little people my whole life. I'm just a little people that got big. That's all it is. So just chill yeah. your butt, you know. But, you know, it's, that's yeah. what runs through your head. But you can't say that out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I will tell you that there is a, a certain amount of awkwardness and weirdness that goes with the territory. But the same thing happens in any area of your life that you grow. Let's say you came from mm-hmm. a home that was not, that didn't have a faith and you became a, a, a very strong person of faith and you grow in that yeah. area. Well, you're going to get eye rolls over that too. Right. You know, how's it going over there? They mm-hmm. handle snakes. You know, it's, you're going to get people. Yeah. How's, how's the cult operating nowadays? You know, you're going to get these snide things from old yeah. friends and family that were not there when you were that different person, but you've changed a lot now, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and, and there's, it, it's just envy and jealousy. And they're two of the, two of the devil's work tools. And, um, and they are different, and it's interesting to study them. It's a good, it's a good discussion. So thank you for letting me get up on a soapbox. Yeah. But, um, you know, jealousy is I'd like to have what you have, and that's saying something like must be nice, and you kind of mean it. Like I'd really like yeah. to have that. I'd like to have gone on that trip or bought that house or whatever. Envy is mm-hmm. I don't think I can ever have that, so I don't want you to have it either. It should be taken yeah. away from you, and that's envy. And you see both of these things pop up in the political landscape these days with the whole wealth inequality argument and that kind of thing. You know, the evil mm-hmm. rich people. See, that that's tr- straight up uh, jealousy. That's really envy because they shouldn't have that because I don't think I can ever have it. And and that's right. the that's the same thing. But see, you just watch for that stuff and, and then uh, you can address it or you can choose to say, I'm going to limit my conversations about those kinds of things. Worst case is that the person is toxic enough old friend or family that they have to you have to distance yourself from them because they're never going to accept that you're winning and you not winning to please them is an absurd idea yeah. you can't go oh i'm going to fail at business because bobby is going to be upset if i win well screw bobby <laughs> right. you know i mean bobby's just gonna have to take a ride you know it's crazy right you can't do that so there's a bobby in the booth and they're all laughing at him in there no not you bobby <laughs> different bobby oh my gosh all right hey good discussion it's one of the things that happens when you win at anything but it definitely happens when you win at money